Philip Dunn. Good morning, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, and thank you for calling me so early in this important debate. And I'd like to start by congratulating my honourable friend uh, for bringing this bill to the House today. I think he shares with me the prospect uh, later this year of joining the ranks of the pensioners amongst our community. Uh, he failed to declare that in his speech, <laughs> um, but I'm glad to be able to put that on the record for the benefit of members of the House. The, um, this is a, a feature of life which we will be fortunate, hopefully, if we get that far, to achieve. Uh, and it is, of course, an increasing, uh, increasingly prevalent amongst our population that, thanks to the good work of the NHS, uh, more and more of us uh, manage to achieve pensional age. I think my honourable friend wants to intervene. Was that the case? No. Um, uh, at the last count there were, that I've seen, there were 12. 7, nearly 12.7 million people claiming the state pension um, uh, in May of last year. And the most recent census that came out in 21 showed that the population of pensioners in England and Wales uh, over 60, well, over 65, which of course now the pension age is going up, is a slightly different figure, has increased from 9.2 million in 2011 to over 11 million in 2021, some 18.6% of the population. And in my constituency, uh, where I think we probably share another characteristic with that of um, my honourable friend's constituency, we have a significantly above average pensionable uh, proportion of the population, 30.2% of the population of pensioners. The reason I mention this, Madam Deputy Speaker, is because although this bill is very narrow in scope, it is, of course, possible that any of us, whether pensionable or not, could be diagnosed with a terminal illness. And therefore, although the actual application in relation to those who are members of uh, defined benefit or defined contribution schemes is, uh, is a subset of that, and within that very few, hopefully, will be diagnosed, uh, it, is, it is important, I think, as he said so uh, well in his speech, uh, that we provide equity uh, to those who, who do fall into this, um, uh, uh, this have such a diagnosis, um, uh, and therefore I think the objective of this bill is an entirely honourable and appropriate one, and one that uh, we should support. And while on the subject of pensions, if I may, as we have the Minister here, I would just like to raise with her a constituency case which was brought to my attention in my vice surgery last Friday by a constituent who is, who I won't name, but is a uh, a member of the Boots Defined Benefit Pension Scheme. The Boots Scheme was acquired by Legal and General quite uh, properly in December of last year, uh, and the new scheme administrator has decided, seemingly according to my constituent, without consultation with members, to remove the option to take an early pension at the, from the age of 60, uh, so that the pensions have to be taken from the age of 65. If this has been done without consultation with members, I would urge the Minister, and I wouldn't expect her to know the answers to this uh, now, and I've written to the Secretary of State, because the Boots Pension Scheme, I think, is probably the one, or certainly one of the largest uh, uh, membership schemes of any retail business in this country. Um, whether or not uh, they, they, the trustees were duly authorised to undertake such a significant potential change in terms for their members without consulting them. Uh, and, and having put that on the record, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'd like to commend my honourable friend for his uh, bill today, which I shall be supporting. Uh, 